Yeah. yeah, we are going to attempt one question on the version of inverse trigonometric function. They are given that y is equals to 1 minus x squared arc sine or the inverse of sine x. We have to find the y dx. We have to find the y the x. That means we have to differentiate this function. Merely looking at this function, two different functions are products of themselves. This one is multiplying this. It's more or less like we have y to be a function of u of x and what v of x because we have this one which is a function of x and this function of s is 1 minus s squared. 1 minus s squared, then we have the v of x, which is the arc sine x. These two functions, they are multiplying themselves, and when two functions, which are functions of s that are multiplying themselves, then that takes us to what we call what? The product rule. When two functions that are functions of s, they are multiplying themselves, then we have to apply the product rule. I haven't identified my first function, which is the u, and the second function, which is the v. What does Podos who says? Let me remind you. The y, the x is equal to what? U dv, the s, plus v, the u, the x. Get each of these components. I've got in my u, I've got in my v. Then I need my what? The v, the x. For my v here, the inverse, I mean, the derivative of this inverse is going to be 1 over square root of what? 1 minus s squared we just finished dealing with this then the u the hex is going to be differentiating this function one minus s squared this one is what one minus s squared one is going to be zero minus s squared is going to be minus two x using the power rule there then substituting that then we have the y the hex is going to be my u and my u is one minus s squared my u dv the hex my dv the hex it's going to be 1 minus 1 over 1 minus s squared. Then plus v, my v is going to be minus, it's going to be my v is arc sine s. Then the u the s is minus 2. Then let's finalize that. We have 1 minus s squared all over square root of what? 1 minus s squared minus 2s arc sine x then this implies that 1 minus s squared divided by this like 1 minus s squared divided by 1 minus s squared goes to power 1 over 2 we have minus 2s arc sine x then don't forget that this on our same base applying the rule of indices we are taking one of the bases 1 minus s squared, this is 1 minus half, and that is going to give us what? Half minus 2x arc sine x. Then this will be broken down into 1 over, this is broken down into what? Square root of what? 1 minus s squared. This one is square root minus 2x arc sine, arc sine s. And this will give us the final answer for our derivative. Now, another concept or one of the applications of this um, differentiation we have been dealing with since money is what we call the stationary point. In some cases, they also call it the turning point. So either they call it the stationary point or they call it what? The turning point. What do we have to understand about this turning point? This will be illustrated with the graph also. The graph of y and s axis we have a graph like this and we have a a, a, a recurrent motion which is sinus sinusoidal in nature this one represents one of the functions which can be sine or cos yes sine or cos these are the pattern now when you have a curve on a cartesian plane like this that repeats itself in a regular pattern this curve merely looking at this we can see the upper uppermost point here Yes, the uppermost point of y will be a square, will be gotten here. This one will be the maximum point here. That's the, going to be the highest value of y here. This is the highest one. Then when you look at below here, when you look at below here, if it is not got, if it does not get to this edge, then at this point, then we are going to it's going to experience the minimum point. 
the least value of y will be experienced here. The highest value of y will be experienced here. This is called the crest on the 12. That one is another part, another explanation entirely. And these are the s-axis. At this point, where you have the maximum point, there will be a corresponding y. At this point, where you have the minimum point, there will be a corresponding x. Let's call this s1. Let's call this s2. Don't forget that we can also call this y1. Let's call this what? y2. But we are not interested in this y1, y2. When you are looking for the stationary point or the turning point, the turning point are said to be the point at which the the, the I mean, at which the maximum point is experienced or the minimum point is experienced. Or more 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 explanatory more explanation can be given to it by saying that the stationary point are said to be the point at which each of the moving points, there are points, points are moving through this curve here. Then there will be a point where it's going to appear to be the maximum. The maximum point of y is this. On this maximum point, the differentiation, which is the y, the s, that I experienced in this curve, the differentiation at this point, which is the y, the x, is going to be zero at this maximum point. Also, the same thing is experienced at this minimum point. The derivative, as it moves here, the dy dx on this minimum point is going to be zero also. So that is why they call this stationary point. Because at this point, there is no movement for the differentiation. There is no movement for the slope and there is no movement for the gradient. That is why we call it the stationary point. So anytime you are talking of the word stationary point, the stationary point includes stationary point includes the minimum point. The maximum point and we also have another point that we call the point of inflation. Point of inflation is a point where it is neither minimum or maximum. Point of inflation is a point where it is neither minimum nor maximum. Is a point where it actually gets in between the minimum and maximum. We are not going to dwell more on that, but we are going to focus more on minimum point and maximum point. Now, when we are talking of maximum point, at these two points, the 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 y the ds is going to be zero. So the first thing you have to know is that at the minimum point and the maximum point or point of inflation at any stationary point, at any stationary point, the reason why they call it stationary point. At any stationary point, the dy, the dx is going to be zero. That's the first understanding of stationary point. Then, we can actually be asked to find the type of stationary point we are dealing with. Is that it is minimum or it is maximum or it is point of inflation? How do you get the nature of the stationary point if you are giving that type of question? When you, when you are interested in the nature, of the stationary point, the nature of stationary point that is either it is minimum or maximum. The nature of the stationary point, we are interested in it. So, what do you do? You are differentiated the first time, the function for the first time, and you equate it to zero. When you equate it to zero, then you are getting the value of x1 and s2, that is at the point s where the man, man, maximum and minimum point occur. Then, the nature of the stationary point will be gotten. By differentiating the second time, that is looking for this word second derivative, which is the two y, the s squared. You have to get the two y, the s squared, to find the nature of the stationary points. That is, if it is maximum, then you get it from this second derivative. If it is minimum, you get it from this second derivative. Or if it is point of inflation, you get it from this second derivative. Now, how do we now get it? If you differentiated the second time, if your d2y, the s squared, and you differentiated the second time, and you get it to be what greater than zero, that means it is positive. If it is positive, the graph will be like this. If it is positive, it's going to be like this. This one is coming upward like this. Let's see the graph. It is coming from what? This positive, then it gets to the peak, it's stable. Then it's coming here, it's negative here. Then it's going up again. This is positive. At the end of the day, when you differentiate the second time and you have a, a positive sign, at the end of the day, you have a positive sign, 
by imputing the value of your hex 1 and s2 you have gotten in this first differentiation we are going to particularize it with an example then when you impute that you have positive you have positive then this point is talking about what a minimum point when you have positive we are talking about a minimum point a minimum point but if you differentiate the second time the two y the s square differentiate the function the second time and you have it to be less than zero that is it is negative then we can have the graph represented like this just as we have above it is coming from positive then at the maximum point which is this here then we have negative don't forget that this is minimum point then we have it coming here the second derivative is this then which is negative if it is negative at this point then we are talking of what a what a maximum point so a maximum point is coming from positive to negative then that produces a what a maximum a maximum point so if it is neither positive nor negative then if the two y the hair squared if it is equal to zero then we have point of inflection point of inflation inflation point of inflation we have point of inflation and that's what we have for it the three concept of stationary point or turning point is that it is a minimum point which you will see here a minimum point which you will see here a maximum point which you will see here or it is neither minimum nor maximum which is a point of inflection then we are going to express or practicalize that with one example. Find the stationary point on the graph of the function. We are giving the function to be y equals to s cubed over 3 minus s squared minus 5s plus 5. We are giving this function. We are asked to find the stationary point. A point where the derivative, the slope is stable. It is not moving. That is the minimum or the maximum or the point of inflection these are the three stationary points we can have find the stationary point on the graph this graph and distinguish between them that is we have to find if the point is minimum or it is maximum or it is point of inflection now the first thing is that we are given the graph to be y equals to s cubed over 3 minus s squared minus 5s plus 5 then we want to find the stationary point firstly we were told that at any stationary point, the derivative must be zero. That's the first concept. Then we just see, we differentiate this the first time. By looking for our dy, the hex, and dy, the hex, differentiating each of these functions, that's 3 s squared, all over 3 minus 2 s minus 5, and this one will be what? Plus zero. Don't forget that this will be equal, dy, the hex will be equal to what? Will be equal to zero. So we equate this to zero. And that means we have three cancel theory here. We have s squared minus two s minus five is equals to zero. Now from here now we can get because y is the independent variable that will produce your I mean s is the independent variable that will produce your y. From here we can get the value for our x here. The value for our s, this one can be solved quadratically. Then we have s squared. Minus 2x minus 5 equals to what? Equals to 0. To solve this quadratically, we have to get, we can use factorization method. In our factorization method, we have the sum, the sum side. Don't forget that. Or we can just use the formula method by saying s is equals to minus what? b plus or minus square root of what? b squared minus 4ac all over what? 2a. My a is going to be 1, which is the coefficient here. My b is going to be minus 2, then my c is going to be what? Minus 5. Then applying that up there, minus, minus 2, plus or minus, square root of what? Minus 2 squared, minus 4, ac, 1 times minus 5, all over what? 2a, my a is 1. Then we have it to be what? 2, plus or minus, this one is going to be 4, this one is minus 5. Minus 5 times minus 4. That's what plus 20. Minus 5 times minus 4. 4 times 5 is 20. All over what? All over 2. 